Hello, everybody, and welcome to this reading of The Elder Scrolls. I am Double Negative, and this is the sixth and final part of the 36 Lessons of Vivek. If you have not yet listened to the first five parts, then please go ahead and seek them out. Sermon 31 Many more years passed in Resdania, and the high priests of the Dwemer were almost ready to make war on the rulers of Veloth. The Hortator had become the husband of Iam during this time, and the first saint of the Triune Way. Vivek had tired of fighting his sons and daughters, and so took a respite from trying to find them. Where is Vivek, my teacher? I love him still, though he grows old. His lamentations, if I may call them that, have changed the skin of the whole country. He is hardly to be found anywhere in Veloth of late. The people grow dark because of it. And I am took mercy on her troubled husband and told him that the sword of the Triune had been fighting minor monsters stirred up by the Dwemer as they worked on their brass siege machines. She took the Hortator inside her and showed him where his master was. Almsevi, or at least that aspect which chose to be Vivek, sat in the litany hall of the false thinking temple after his battle with the flute and pipe ogres of the West Gash. He began writing again in his Book of Hours. He had to put on his water face first. That way he could separate the bronze of the old temple from the blue of the new and write with happiness. Second, he had to take another feather from the big moon, further rendering it dead. That way he could write about mortals with truth. Third, he recalled the pomegranate banquet, where he was forced to marry to Molag Ball with wet scriptures to cement his likeness as Mephala, and write with black hands. He wrote, The last time I heard his voice, showing the slightest sign of impatience, I learned to control myself and to submit to the will of others. Afterwards, I dared to take on the sacred fire and realized there was no equilibrium with the et ada. They were liars, lost roots, and the most I can do is to be an interpreter into the rationale. Even that fails the needs of the people. I sit on the mercy seat and pass judgment, the waking state, and the phase aspect of the innate urge. Only here can I doubt it, in this book, written in water, broadened to include evil. Then Vivek threw his ink on this passage to cover it up for the lay reader, and wrote instead, Find me in the blackened paper, unarmored, in final scenery. Truth is like my husband, instructed to smash, filled with procedure and noise, hammering, weighty, heaviness made schematic, lessons learned only by a mace. Let those that hear me then be buffeted, and let some die in the ash from the striking. Let those that find him find him murdered by illumination, pummeled like a traitorous house, because if an hour is golden, then immortal I am a secret code. I am the partaker of the doom drum, chosen of all those that dwell in the middle world to wear this crown, which reverberates with truth, and I am the mangling messiah. The ending of the words is Alms of V. Sermon 32 The Scripture of the Mace, First the pleasure of annihilation is the pleasure of disappearing into the unreal. All those that would challenge the sleeping world will seek membership in this movement. I denounce the alienation of the cloven duality with a hammer. Second, take from me the lessons as a punishment for being mortal. To be made of dirt is to be treated as such by your jailers. This is the key and the lock of the Deirdre. Why do you think they escaped the compromise? Third, Belothi, your skin has become the pregnant darkness. My brooding has brought this on. Remember that Boethia asked you to become the color of bruise. How else to show yourselves people of the exodus into the vital? Pain? Fourth, the sage who was not an anvil. 
a conventional sentence and nothing more, by which I mean dead, the fourth walking way. Fifth, a proper comprehension of the virtues, stage managed and to be murdered. Sixth, in the end, rejoice as a hostage released from drumming torment, but that savors his wound. The drum breaks and you find it to be a nest of hornets, which is to say, your sleep is over. Seventh, the suspicious is spectacle and the lie is only a theoretical inspiration. Eighth, but then why, you ask, do the Daedra wish to meddle with the Arbus? It is because they are the radical critique, essential as all martyrs. That some are more evil than others is not an illusion, or rather, it is a necessary illusion. The ending of the words is Alms Seville. Sermon 33 Then Vivek left the litany hall of the false thinking temple, where he had brooded for so long creating the scripture of the pounding light, and went back to the space that was not a space. From the provincial house he looked into the middle world to find the seventh monster, called Lie Rock. Lie Rock was born of Vivek's second aperture and was thrown out of the pomegranate banquet by a member of the Sweeps, another forgotten guild. The Sweep did not take it for the monster that it was, and so he did not expect it to fly from his hand and into the heavens. I am born of golden wisdom and powers that should have forever been on alike. With this nature, I am invited into the hidden heaven, by which he meant the scaled blanket, made of not stars, whose number is thirteen. Lie Rock became full of foolishness, haggling with the void ghost who hides in the religions of all men. The void ghost said, Stay with me a full hundred years, and I will give you a power that no divinity will dare disobey. But before the hundred years was up, Vivek was already looking for Lai Rock and found him. Stupid stone, Vivek said. To hide in the scaled blanket is to make a mark on nothing. His bargains are only for ruling kings. So Vivek sent the Hortator to the heavens to shave Lie Rock asunder by the named axe. Nerevar made peace with the South Pole Star of Thieving and the North Pole Star of Warriors, and the Third Pole Star, which existed only in the Aether, which was governed by the apprentice of Magnus the Sun. They gave him leave to wander among their charges and gave him red sight by which to find Lie Rock in the hidden heaven. By chance, Nerevar met the Void Ghost first, who told him that he was in the wrong place, to which the Hortator said, Me or you? And the Void Ghost said both. This sermon does not tell what else was said between these masters. Lie Rock, however, used the confusion to launch his own attack on the city god, Vivek. He was hastened by all three of the Black Guardians, who wanted him swiftly gone, though they meant no hostility to the Lord of the Middle Air. The citizenry of Vivek screamed as they saw a shooting star come down out of the sky hole like a toll road of hell. But Vivek merely raised his hand and froze Lai Rock just above the city, and then he pierced the monster with Muatra. The practice of piercing the second aperture is now forbidden. When Nerevar returned, he saw the frozen comet above his lord's city. He asked whether or not Vivek wanted it removed. I would have done it myself if I wanted, silly Hortator. I shall keep it there with its last intention intact, so that if the love of the people of this city for me ever disappear, so shall the power that holds back their destruction. Nerevar said, Love is under your will only. Vivek smiled and told the Hortator that he had become a minister of truth. The ending of the words is Alm Savi. Sermon 34 Then Vivek left the ministry of truth and went back to the space that was not a space. From the provincial house he looked into the middle world to find the eighth and final and mightiest monster, called Gulga Morjil and more. 
the wise must look elsewhere for this string of power. Vivek called to his side the Hortator, and this was the first time that Nerevar had ever been to the provincial house. He had the same vision that Vivek had so many years ago, that of the two-headed ruling king. Who is that, he wondered. Vivek said, the Red Jewel of Conquest. Nerevar, perhaps because he was frightened, became vexed at his lord's answer. Why are you always so evasive? Vivek told the Hortator that to be otherwise was to betray his nature. Together they moved into the Middle World, to a village near where Vivek had been found by I.M. and Set. The eighth monster was there, but he did not act much like a monster. He sat with his legs in the ocean and with a troubled look on his face. When he saw his mother-father, he asked why he should have to die and return to oblivion. Vivek told the eighth monster that to be otherwise was to betray his nature. Since this did not seem to satisfy the monster and Vivek still had a touch of I am's mercy, he said, The fire is mine, let it consume thee, and make a secret door at the altar of Padholm, in the house of Boet he ah, where we become safe and looked after. The monster accepted Muatra with a peaceful look, and his bones became the foundation for the city of the dead, Anon Narsis. Nerevar put away his axe, which he had at the ready, and frowned. Why, he said, did you ask me to come if you knew the eighth monster would give in so easily? Vivek looked at the Hortator for a long time. Nerevar understood. Do not betray your nature. Answer as you will. Vivek said, I brought you here because I knew the mightiest of my issue would succumb to Muatra without argument, if only I gave him consolation first. Nerevar looked at Vivek for a long time. Vivek understood. Say the words, Hortator. Nerevar said, Now I am the mightiest of your children. Let this sermon be consolation to those who read it that are destined to die. The ending of the words is Alm Savi. Sermon 35 The Scripture of Love The formulas of proper Velothi magic continue in ancient tradition, but that virility is dead, by which I mean at least replaced. Truth owes its medicinal nature to the establishment of the myth of justice. Its curative properties it likewise owes to the concept of sacrifice. Princes, chiefs, and angels all subscribe to the same notion. This is a view primarily based on a prolific abolition of an implied profanity seen in ceremonies, knife fighting, hunting, and the exploration of the poetic. On the ritual of occasions which comes to us from the days of the cave glow, I can say nothing more than to loosen your equation of moods to lunar currency. Later, and by that I mean much, much later, my reign will be seen as an act of the highest love, which is a return from the astral destiny and the marriages between. By that I mean the catastrophes, which will come from all five corners. Subsequent are the revisions, differentiated between hope and the distraught, situations that are only required by the periodic death of the immutable. Cosmic time is repeated. I wrote of this in an earlier life. An imitation of submersion is love's premonition, its folly into the underworld, by which I mean the day you will read about outside of yourself in an age of gold. For on that day, which is a shadow of the sacrificial concept, all history is obliged to see me for what you are, in love with evil. To keep one's powers intact at such a stage is to allow for the existence of what can only be called a continual spirit. Make of your love a defense against the horizon. Pure existence is only granted to the holy, which comes in a myriad of forms, half of them frightening and the other half divided into equal parts purposeless and assured. Late is the lover that comes to this by any other walking way than the fifth which is the number of the limit of this world. The lover is the highest country and a series of beliefs. He is the sacred city bereft of a double. The uncultivated land of monsters is the rule. 
This is clearly attested by Anu and his double, which love knows never really happened. Similarly, all the other symbols of absolute reality are ancient ideas ready for their graves, or at least the essence of such. The scripture is directly ordered by the codes of Mephala, the origin of sex and murder, defeated only by those who take up those ideas without my intervention. The religious elite is not a tendency or a correlation. They are dogma, complemented by the influence of the untrustworthy sea and the governance of the stars. Dominated at the center by the sword, which is nothing without a victim to cleave unto. This is the love of God, and he would show you more, predatory but at the same time instrumental to the will of critical harvest, a scenario by which one becomes as he is, of male and female, the magic hermaphrodite. Mark the norms of violence and it barely registers, suspended as it is by treaties written between the original spirits. This should be seen as an opportunity and in no way tedious, though some will give up for it is easier to kiss the lover than to become one. The lower regions crawl with these souls, caves of shallow treasures, meeting in places to testify by way of extension, when love is only satisfied by a considerable, incalculable effort. The ending of the words is Alm Savi. Sermon 36 For these were the days of Resdania, when Chimer and Dwemer lived under the wise and benevolent rule of the Alm Savi and their champion the Hortator, though the Dwemer had become foolish and challenged their masters. Out of their fortresses they came with golden ballista that walked, and mighty Atronox, and things that spat flame, and things that made killing songs. Their king was Dumak Dwarf Orc, but their high priest was Kagranak the Blighter, Golden Ballista. Under mountains and over them, the war with the Dwemer was raged, and then came the northern men to help Kagranak, and they brought Izmir again. Leading the armies of the Chimer was the slave that would not perish, the Hortator Nerevar, who had traded his axe for the Ethos knife. He slew Dumak at Red Mountain and saw the heartbone for the first time. Men of brass destroyed the eleven gates of the Morning Hold, and behind them came the Dwemeri architects of Tone. Iam threw down her cloak and became the face-snaked queen of the three-in-one. Those that looked upon her were overcome by the meanings of the stars. Under the sea, Set stirred and brought the army he had been working on in the castles of glass and coral. Clockwork drays, mockeries of the Dwemeri war machines, rose up from the seas and took their counterparts back beneath, where they were swallowed forever by the sea. Red Mountain exploded as the Hortator went too far inside, seeking the Charmat. Dwemeri High Priest Kagranak then revealed that which he had built in the image of Vivek. It was a walking star, which burnt the armies of the Triune and destroyed the heartland of Veloth, creating the Inner Sea. Each of the aspects of the Alm Savi then rose up together, combining as one, and showed the world the Sixth Path. Iam took from the star its fire. Set took from it its mystery and Vek took from it its feet, which had been constructed before the gift of Molag Ball, and destroyed in the manner of truth, by a great hammering. When the soul of the Dwemer could walk no more, they were removed from this world. Resdania was no more. It had been redeemed of all the inequities of the foolish. The Alm Savi drew nets from the beginning place and captured the ash of Red Mountain, which they knew was the blight of the Dwemer, and that would serve only to infect the whole of the Middle World, and ate it. Altadun done Mary. The beginning of the words is Alm Savi. I give you this as Vivek. This has been a reading of the 36 Lessons of Vivek, Sermons 31 through 36. From The Elder Scrolls III, Morrowind. This has been Double Negative. 
If you liked this long, rambling raving of an insane living god, then please do not forget to click the like button. If you didn't like it, then you can click the dislike button. And if you would like to hear more reading of the Elder Scrolls, then please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.